Hi guys, how are you? Namaskar. After such a powerful uh, presentation by General, I think there is no need of me actually, right? Because everything was done by him. And so I think we should have a huge round of applause for him again, right? Because I was blown up. So, uh, so I haven't done much preparation, honestly, because I, I don't know why Ayush has called me up here, because this is about you people and how you get charged up, you know. So I will try my best because I haven't prepared much. My team has given me a little bit of input around TEDx yesterday only. You know, Jai Mujhe Bata Laga, technology, entertainment, and of course, design, right? So, but I think I want to focus more on this, you know, which General also talked about, that you will have a lot of choices, right? You have to make a lot of choices in your life, in the journey of life, you know. And I know. Most of them, most of people you are around 15, 16, 17 age, you know, largely born in this decade only, you know, in this century only. And I believe, you know, you people will be more in action when 2030 will happen, 2040 will happen, right? So you have to prepare yourself for then that two decades, right? And that two decades will only happen once you take right choices in next 15 years or maybe next 10 years, right? So I want to start with my own experience first so that I can relate, and you can relate my life to your own challenges, and then we can have more uh, wide discussion around it. So I'll start, you know, I'm a 70-born guy, you know. I start from 83. You know, 83, my dad served in government, right? He's an engineer. 83, I get failed in eighth, eighth class. And the reason was because my English was not too good, and I just failed it, right? So my dad made a choice that, why can't I ship this guy to Hindi medium? And from 83 to 90, I actually studied Hindi medium, right? And but in that seven years, I get my confidence back. I got my confidence back. Yes, I can also do something, you know, but in 90, you know, uh, I took one decision that, you know, I'm not that do good in maths. So I won't uh, select physics, chemistry, maths, you know, I would rather opt for commerce. And I, I didn't go for arts, because in those days, arts means that you don't do type, right? So uh, I picked commerce, and I don't know what happened in the 90s, you know. Once I picked commerce, you know, my confidence, my performance, my self-belief belief gone up, you know, that I can also do a lot of better things in life, you know. And for next five years, I became chartered accountant, and in 95, and, and that's one story also in 95, that I actually failed four times in my C exam. Four times, sir. Right? But I thought myself that, you know, boss, this is not going anywhere. One of the chart accountants will pass on, like, you know, after failing, will not have much difference to the market, to the society, to myself. So actually, I opted out that, you know, I'll not give two, two semesters. Actually, I uh, jumped off two semesters, and put myself into a category that, you know, in third semester, I will get myself in merit. And guys, what, do you know what happened? I was in merit of C exams in, in 94, right? So I think, again, I made a choice that, you know, I want to leave two semester, want to focus one more, and then want to be best in that, right? So the idea is to tell you guys that, you know, you have to make right choices in, in your life, you know, in, in your life. And, and that's what General also told you that, you have to have an aim. You have to have an aim, right? So if in that aim, you have to make decisions, right? In, in six, seven, he took decision that he wanted to become soldier, right? In eight, some doctor took a decision that he wanted to become doctor, right? So I think 11, 12th is a founding years for you, correct? So in that founding years, you have to be sure enough that why are you taking these choices? You know, why are you making these choices, right? And your choice has to be good enough that in in 30s and 40s, you know, when the action come on you, you can perform, right? And in 95, you know, again, when I got married, you know, I had a lot of offer of jobs, a lot of offer of jobs, right? But again, I took the view that I won't do any job because I didn't like my father doing job, right? It was very hard kind of working, so I didn't like that kind of environment, mahol ki boss, ye to nahi chalega mere saath. 
and being a government uh, son, you know, government, uh, you know, uh, government father son, right? You know, where I figured out that I didn't have any capital, but how to start a business. So again, again, I made a choice that, you know, come what may, come what may, I want to start my own company. I want to start my own company. And I think AU Bank, which we are all talking about now, was founded in 95. It was founded in January 96. Now it's close to 25 years. And, you know, you have seen this, the kind of progress we have made in last, uh, you know, 25 years now. You know, it was one man army, sir. I started alone, you know. Now, after 25 years, you know, we are around 15,000 people with more than 2 million customers with a net worth of close to 1 billion, you know, and across around 11 states. So I think, and in this journey of my professional life, I also made a lot of choices, you know. And I'll be very honest here that being a charter accountant, the initial year was to not to pay tax. You know, do a lot of tax planning, right? But I think in 2002, I said to myself that, you know, Sanjay, if you want to become a right businesses or you have to build a right business, you have to pay tax. You know, and it should not come with a choice. So certain things you people has to do because it demand of the time. It is a rule-bound country. You know, we have to honor compliance. We have to honor your rules, regulations. And 2003, you know, I started paying tax, you know, honestly, on this forum, I would have to admit that, you know, be, before that, it was not a right choice, but 2003, I put it myself in that mindset that, come what may, I have to pay taxes, and that was very hard choice, because in those times, we were not that compliant country, honestly, correct? So, but 2003 onwards, the moment I started paying tax, a lot of people started looking after us, that why this team is doing such an amazing job, and they started putting money with us, right? And again in 2008, we made a choice that, you know, I want to share the wealth. Let's become more inclusive. Let's respect diversity, correct? And in 2008, we brought private equity guys, we got many more senior management team, and started building the organization. And 2014, again, uh, there was a choice that, you know, we would have run our organization in the way we, are, we were running from last 20 years, but RBI offered us to transit from a NBFC to bank. And again, you will appreciate that, you know, a normal business, which, which is, can be run uh, without regulation or with the substandard of regulations, but bank has to be run on a top-class regulation, right? It's a public deposit in the end. So, but we chose a way that, you know, again, that, you know, we want to be on the right side of the regulation, and let's become bank. And 2017, we had become a bank. And again, last three years, you know, post-bank, ma'am, it is an amazing journey, honestly, because now, I think in last three years, we have learned that, you know, what is all about responsibility? What is about scalability? What is about, you know, forever kind of journey? You know, how you can sustain yourself for next 200, 300, 400 years, right? So if I want to ask one question to you people, right? Which is the oldest bank which is still being run in this world? Any guesses? Oldest bank in this, in this world? Any guesses? You guys have Google, right? Right? So if you go and do Google, the oldest bank is around 1,465, ma'am. 1,465, which is still being run in Europe. It's an Italian bank. You know, in 1,400 odd years, we were having Akbar. Correct? The India was ruled by Akbar. In those times, the institution called bank was formed in Italy. It's still being run. So I think, again, we made a choice that, you know, we have to be in a business which can be long-term, which can be sustainable over the years, which can last forever, you know. I used to say to my team that, you know, let's, let's build an institution, you know, which can last for another 500 years, and if I had a rebirth, can I come and join this bank again, you know? So, 
I think that kind of uh, energy, that kind of aim, I think this institution can give you. And of course, uh, we all have to respect the democracy, you know, because I personally believe that this has happened because of the democracy we are enjoying in this country. You know, a uh, lot has been said in last five, six years, but I am running this business from last 25 years, you know, and I haven't seen a singular incident to myself around that, you know, uh, that we are, we are living in a country which is scared, which is have personal favors, or which can be done only to a selective people. No. You have to believe that there is a power of democracy. And, and I, I hope uh, you must be knowing that we are a very lucky one, that in a, in a universe of around 7 billion people, you know, close to 50% people live in democracy, and we are one of them, you know, and of course, next I think is, is about diversity, you know, if you can, if you can build, you can understand diversity, I think you can build anything for you, you can build anything for you, so I think if you make right choices, you use the power of democracy, and you do inclusiveness. You know, you people can build a next world for you. I'm very optimistic that in India, next 10 years, there will be a huge transition. Because I have seen that transition in the 90s also, but that was an economic transition. I think the country is going through a next phase of transition where we need to identify ourselves, right? But I think the decade of 30s, the decade of 40s will belong to you. So you have to prepare yourself in a way that you don't do large mistakes, you know, you don't do large commitment, which hampers your future, right? But be there and I think perform, right? And you can imagine that people like me uh, from nowhere has done this, you know? So if you are so educated, I think, and general principles of war, if you can adopt, execute, you know, and I'll, I'll also say one thing, you know, don't be high and dry. This principle of war can only be fruitful when you execute. There is a difference between understanding, learning, and then execution. Many people will learn and understand, but few will execute. So I think your focus should be on execution. Focus should be that how we really understand the situation, how you really know the reality, and then execute. And I think in the next 30, 40 years, you know, as everybody is saying is that India will be the next superpower. Next superpower. But how will we do that? You guys have to do that. You have to do it. Any of, the, any of you can think big, right? And just be there, just be there. And use your next 10 years so importantly on you only. Invest in you. Understand you. And then build. So I think in the end, I think I would say, ma'am, thank you so much for this opportunity because I'm not a big speaker. But uh, I would only say you, in the end, it's up to you. So Sanne Bola, I think it was an amazing uh, line to remember forever that I'm the master of my fate and captain of my soul. I think it's two lines mein sab kuch likha hua hai. And if you can remember these two lines every day, every moment, I think your life will be changed. And you'll be looking forward to build an amazing, happy, and successful life. Thank you so much. Pleasure.